Today's webinar will cover the Jonas Encore Software System Administration User Management. During today's webinar, <clears throat> phones will be muted. You can use the chat box to direct questions throughout the webinar, but we do ask that you hold those questions to the end of the session as we will have a question and answer period at the end. Webinars are to enhance your knowledge of the Jonas Encore software and their use as a refresher for those individuals that have already taken detailed training on the Jonas Encore system by a certified trainer. They are not a supplement for training. The webinar will be approximately 15 minutes or less of information with 10 minutes for questions and answers at the end of the session. So today's user management webinar will focus on how to set up user groups and users and also discuss the best practice of reviewing your users and user groups at year end to clean out unused accounts, adjust your account settings, and other features. So Encore distinguishes uh, privileges by user, so every Encore user will have some level of access, whether it be just point of sale, some back office, um, some components of back office and point of sale. User groups should be established for generic users and also managerial users for each department. So some examples of your user group level would be a controller, accounting users, food and beverage managers, food and beverage staff, golf shop managers, and golf shop staff. So you really want to break down your user groups <clears throat> based on the different, uh, you know, areas within the club. We always see kind of a breakdown between the food and beverage and golf, you know, tennis and pool if you have it. Um, and within those departments, you normally see a breakdown of managers and staff. Sometimes you may have, you know, even more levels within that. So you may have a group for managers, supervisors, and staff. And then again, often the controller will have different access levels um, as opposed to the accounting users, which may include AR, AP, or you may break out those into separate user groups. To create user groups, you'll go to System Administration, System Setups, User Groups. <clears throat> and so you can see here we have some samples listed. To create a new group, you'll hit New on your task toolbar, and you'll describe that user group in the description field. So the general core information is the name of your group, that description field, and then the Users tab will view users who are assigned to this group or assign users. So the best practice is to assign your group under User Administration. Also contained in the General tab is the Default tab, and this is just an override of global settings, how to view reports, um, the launching into full screen. There's just some generic settings there, and those can be established at the user group level. The menu security setup, or that lock um, icon, is probably the, the most important piece of setting up a user group, because this is where you establish what access levels they have. So you can permit full access, view only access, or no access for each specific menu item. So setups, tasks, reports, each of those have individual line items underneath them, and you can set your access at this level. So you can click on a menu item to change the access level and then choose the option from your top ribbon to designate the access level. So you can see your full access, view only, or no access. So I'm just going to switch to my software here and do a new user group. We'll call this accounting. So when I go into my menu security setup, these are all my modules. And then again, each of these expand into tasks, setups, and reports. And then each of those would expand further. So instead of having to go through every single item and say no access view only, you can actually do it on the module as a whole. Okay, so then everything within it will be that way. If you don't want to use those top buttons, you can actually double click on the line and it will change it. So double clicking brings me through the different stages. So I can double click to change it. If I want to, you know, say so they have no access and then come into a specific thing and say, but they could print an email event forms, for example, I could just come to that line item, double click it, and now only that line item is green. Alternatively, I could come up to the top to make it um, allowed. So again, double-clicking will move that from full access to view only to no access. 
And then you can do that at the, the broadest level, and you can also do it at the, you know, more narrow level. So you could do it at the whole task level, so I could double-click on event tasks or just something specifically in there. View only means that they can just see it. They can't click new. They can't edit. They can't delete. They can't modify any of it. On the right-hand side, you'll get a preview of what their task bar menu will look like based on what you allow. So again, accounts receivable, tasks, full access means you're going to have access to every, you know, to-do or every task in the system, and that's designated by your green check mark. A partial access means you have some privileges within that uh, field of AR tasks, but not all. So you can see I have some green check marks as well as some red check marks. That gives me this other green check mark up here, which indicates that I have partial access. So that, you know, double check mark that we're seeing, that indicates that the user has some level of access in AR tasks, whereas the circle green check marks means that they would have full access to everything in it. You can use restrictions to limit your user group and user in the following areas. So company, if your club has more than one company, you can restrict users to only being able to see one company or two companies. You can restrict items. So this is really important for point of sale users so that you only have access to your respective sales items. So for example, a golf manager and a golf staff shouldn't have access to food and beverage items because not only does it you know, convolute their sales item setup and their grid, they're going to see, you know, shrimp mixed in with their golf clubs, but it also makes their point of sale use more difficult because if they do an item lookup at point of sale, they're going to see shrimp amongst their golf clubs. So you do want to restrict those items for your specific departments. This can also apply to billing items as well, which is your back office. You can also restrict inventory. So again, if you have multiple departments using inventory, you can restrict the inventory groups they have access to so that, it, you know, their month end counts or for inventory maintenance, they're not seeing the other department's data. <clears throat> you can also restrict vendor groups. So if you're talking about a, a user group that has access to accounts payable, you can restrict that vendor group. Um, so if you have golf vendor groups, tennis, and maybe you have two AP clerks that are, you, you know, responsible for different um, vendor processing, this could be useful. Um, if you're using the time tracker module, you can restrict their um, privileges within staff scheduling. And then also miscellaneous tab gives you system administration and business intelligence settings. So here's the restrictions that we're talking about on the screen, so companies, items. So <clears throat> in order to restrict anything, you would just click that restrict access and then decide what that user group is eligible for. So in here, if we go to restrictions, we could restrict and then we could click what they were eligible for. Um, again, inventory, if you only have one inventory group, then there's no need for your inventory restrictions. Vendor group, document types, CRM types, again, if those modules have been purchased. Staff scheduling, again, if time tracker has been purchased, and then miscellaneous. So the takeover for locks means if uh, an event is locked or if a batch is locked, I as a user can take it over. You normally don't turn those on except for administrative user groups. That can activate, deactivate periods. This is for, again, an administrative user group that are deactivating the month, um, you know, closing the month, opening the month. Report publishing, allowing people to publish reports for other users and facilities, which is for event management, um, preventing them from overbooking. So that's more at a staff level. So you can use the booking modules to grant or deny privileges for the activity management applications, and these include health and spa, core booking, class scheduling, event management, and dining reservations. So in this tab, you're going to see settings for those activity modules specifically. Again, you're only going to see those access levels uh, if you have that module. So you can use the other modules tab to grant or deny privileges for um, whether or not people can overbook events. So if I show you an example here in my booking modules tab, here again in my application I have all the modules. So I have health and spa settings, I have my core booking settings, I have class scheduling settings, event management, dining, and lessons. 
So as you work through these tabs, you can see there's, you know, cannot settings, which means if I flag that, I'm denying them privilege. You also have can, so can be used for managerial overrides, and that exists in all of the activity modules. So that can. So just be sure that you're reading them. Um, when you see the cannots or the cans, obviously those are denying privileges versus um, granting access. So just be sure that you're um, reading them because sometimes when you look at them, you're not sure if you're granting access or denying it. So just go through, um, read the settings, and decide whether or not that applies to the user group you're creating. So in the other modules tab, you have accounts receivable and point of sale. So in here, you have settings for point of sale users as well as back office um, for accounts receivable. The point of sale we have can be used for managerial overrides, whether or not they're required to start a shift, whether or not they can access other user shifts, whether or not they have access to voids, um, you know, item voids, uh, chit voids, uh, if it's been settled in cash, can they void that? So if it's been tendered, whether or not they can see other servers open or closed chits, and then on the right-hand side are discount settings. These are all cannot, so cannot enter negative quantities. So that's like doing a return. Cannot access fixed item discounts, open item discounts, and then we've talked about the same thing but for chit discounts and open chit discounts. So if we flip back here just to show you in that tab here, um, in the point of sale, can be used for managerial overrides, not required to start a shift. So those are all those settings we just saw. The accounts receivable settings are the ability to hide transactions from member statements. So if you build something, make a mistake, and you need to reverse it, being able to hide those two, you know, in and out. Um, entering minimum adjustments, again, that's if you are using the unused minimums portion of our software. That gives that person the ability to adjust minimums. And then if you have the time tracker module, then this is a setting where you can establish um, what department um, this user group can edit the rates of, edit rates, um, and have managerial access to it. Again, you'll only see these um, tabs if you have that module. So once you have the user group set up, those are your basis, and then you're going to go to your system setup the users. And this is where you're going to set up employees, assign those employees to a user group, and you can, again, set overrides on the individual level. So you're going to use the restrictions and booking modules and other modules tabs to override the group settings. So you only want to put an override setting on if they don't follow that group, you know, status quo. Um, you can also override the group menu security, so that lock icon, and to give that user more or less access to menu options. Where possible, try to avoid using overrides on the user level, because if you override a user <clears throat> and then you change, you know, that user group setting globally to say that all, you know, F&B staff, you know, no longer have access to this, then you have to remember to still go into those individuals who have overrides on and do it to their accounts as well, because if they have an override on, it's not going to um, respect the group setting. So if you can avoid doing overrides, um, you know, if, if enough people are having overrides, you want to think about maybe I should have a separate group for them. Um, so again, if you're overriding a bunch of F&B staff because they're supervisors, maybe it's worthwhile creating a user group for F&B supervisors to avoid that override. Um, but again, you, you will still use overrides on the, the circumstance where that person is, you know, a single individual where you're not going to create a user group just for them, um, and you can use the override at the user group or at the user level. So here you can see in the user setup, there is a checkbox for override group menu settings. And then in each of these tabs, there will be a checkbox for override group settings. So um, if you are using Time Tracker, you can use the staff linkage section to create a new staff record for users who need to be set up in Time Tracker as well as a login for the computer. Um, so that is available here at the bottom. Um, staff records may be needed for the spa management, court booking, class scheduling, and event management applications. If a staff record has been previously set up, then you can link that existing staff record to a user group. Again, the staff linkage to users is, is really module dependent, so if you have the time tracker module or if you have some of these activity modules. 
The edit staff information as needed for the activity management modules and time tracker can be done right on that tab. So there is a staff info tab on this setup and that's where you can go to edit his information without having to go into the separate uh, staff setup. So um, one note, if you are linking staff to users, again, and, and this is um, more on a specific number of clubs that have the modules required for this, but if you are linking the staff and user, if the username and password um, exist for a user, then that is how they would log into Time Tracker, that same login. Um, <clears throat> so you only need one login for the computer and clocking in for Time, time Tracker. Another note is <clears throat> if your username and password are the same, then at the POS login screen, a user only needs to enter their username. So this is where we can talk about a best practice of setting up your food and beverage staff with numeric logins where their username and password are the same so that when I'm, you know, wanting to start a chit at point of sale, <clears throat> I can just enter, you know, a three-digit number and not have to enter a password. So right here, see this number, the password would also be 117. And that way the system knows that I don't need a password. I'm logging into point of sale by hitting 117 as my username and hitting the green check mark upon login. There is no password required. This can save time so that servers aren't having to enter, you know, their first initial last name and a, a complicated password before starting every chip. <clears throat> Again, back office users, accounting, um, accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, managerial level access, they're normally going to have a username that is their, you know, last name, first initial, or first initial, last name, or first name, and they'll have an actual password to enter. And this is also, you know, more secure for managerial overrides. So if a manager is logging in frequently to enter chits and they have enhanced POS clearances, so voids, it may be better to create two user accounts. One would be their manager account, as I mentioned, where their password is different than their username. So my login, um, you know, is my last name, first initial, and then I have a, a secure password. The other one would be to enter chits. So if I'm a manager that sometimes I work on the floor and I need to be entering chits on the fly, I could create a numeric login for, for myself. This way, we're not always entering my password. <clears throat> so if I'm doing a managerial override, the servers don't know that, you know, my manager password is 117 because that's also my login number. So I would actually have two accounts as a managerial user. Another option would be to give all point-of-sale users the void, discounts, et cetera, clearance and let the system track who is voiding. So there's kind of two schools of thought on that and whether or not you give your servers access to voids and discounts. If you don't, there is a possibility that they eventually learn the manager's password and, and use that without the manager's authorization. And so then you're effectively not really uh, having a managerial override. Um, the other option is to allow them to void and give discounts because those are all tracked by the username who's logged in doing it. And so you can track, you know, which users are doing that or abusing that um, privilege. A best practice is when staff are no longer employed by your club to uncheck the active flag on the main page of the user account. They can be reactivated if they return. Um, you do not want to overwrite their names with new employees because you'll distort the audit records associated. You can't delete a user once they have, you know, processed a chit, again, because they are associated with an audit record. So you're better just to uncheck the active flag, save that user, they're now deactivated, um, and if they return, you can reactivate them. If they don't return, then we can filter them out of that uh, screen and not view them. So that brings us to the end of the um, content presentation. I will unmute the lines if anyone has any questions. Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> 